Yeah, this is what's for sale. No joke. So why am I smiling it? Well, the company could use some money. And I want to help Blake out with his 240. It's been sitting out there for the last year. Nothing's really happened with it. So he could use a hand good, good father-son project. I've had the car for nine years and it's been great. I used it maybe nine times last year. I think every time I shot a video, I took the car out. And that was it last year, which isn't much. We made a couple of shows our Saturday night thing. That was it. So it's time for me to sell it, move on to something else. And you know, I'll probably regret it. But anyways, uh, like I said, I got those reasons to sell it. And rather than drag this on forever and ever, and I'll just tell you what I'm gonna sell it for now. So if you're interested, great. If not, don't worry about it. If you are interested and you've watched the channel, you know, there is a ton of videos I've done in the last nine years of this thing. And everything I've had to fix in the car, every problem I've had the car, and even the problems that it still has now, which are pretty minor. You know, I really enjoyed actually learning, you know, mechanics with this car. It's always mechanically inclined and you more or less need to be for one of these, but it's uh, come, you know, I just, I'm not that interested anymore. And I've got it out of my system. I got all the pictures and all this archive video stuff to remember it by. So I think I'm good. Anyways, I'm gonna tell you right now what I'm selling for. So you don't have to watch the rest of the video if you're not interested. I'm selling it, listing it at 55,000 US dollars. You know, I have to convert it to Canadian or Euros or whatever else that you're looking at. So that's what it is. This is uh, end of October. I'm listing it. Actually, only friends and family know about it right now. And uh, I'll create this listing and I'll go, you know, with the regular stuff. So the rest of this video, we'll go over a quick overview of the car or what exactly it is if you're new to the channel and you don't know the car. For those of you that do know about it, um, there's plenty of archive videos as well. So we'll go through it now, give you a quick rundown of the car, what it's built, how it's built, who built it, what's in it, everything else. But it's not a fear. So the car right now is in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. It was originally built in uh, Quebec by Luc Chartrand. He's building Canada's first supercar, the HTT Plethor. He used this car in order to help him get investors, proving that he could build a car. So it was professionally built by him. It's uh, registered here, has a VIN number, and uh, I, like I said, I've been using it the last nine years. Has about, I think, 12,000 kilometers. We'll have to check when we go in 12,000 miles. We'll have to check when we go in the car because I really can't remember what it has. So, uh, Let's just go around the car. So this is one of Bill Kester's bodies. Uh, KMC Custom Motor Cars. They're out of uh, uh, Texas. And uh, Armstrong Motors used their bodies as well. And the, uh, the kit was brought up and then built up here by Luke. And it was uh, basically when you, it was a shell you get with it. And it's all fiberglass. But uh, all in all, they're all sweet, small, they're minor things. There's nothing major wrong with the car, and uh, that's one of the great things about it. And that's what I spent the last nine years doing. Okay, there you can see that stress crack on the door. Crack along there, crack over there. That's just the engine cover for because of the heat. Car, there's a little dinger here, had that, got the. Uh, on each of the fenders, there's a uh, scratches from people sitting on the car. Previous owner actually, I think, was using it for promotional stuff. So you can see there's more on here, too. I think I got some other videos on that. So the car does have some imperfections. There's a video that I have of everything wrong with the Lambo I did last year, and some of those things I've actually fixed and, uh, since then. So the car has a uh, remote. And uh, the door is open on a window, basically using a window regulator in order to uh, open the doors. Yeah, I do it twice to open. 
So the first one's just in the safety latch. Second one does the actual opening. Now if you go, there's a lever in here to, I'll show you in a sec, to open it. Manually inside as well as uh, toggle switch to do it electrically if you want. Let's open the front hood. Actually, it looks like it's open already. It is. You guys probably can't see it on camera right now, but I'll show it to you in a second. And the wing's so heavy, it latches the hood back down again. But there's a trick I can do to my own. I should have it right in the back. Apparently the real McCoy has this problem too. Well, I figure it makes a wire out of it. And most of the time, you just gotta have something to press it up a little bit so when you pull the lever, it fully unlatches. So what we have here is a 93 Corvette LT1. I think it had 20,000 kilometers on it when they put it in here. It was out of a wreck. It's made it to a Griffin gearbox uh, transaxle. It's down under that battery. It's a new Optimum, bat Optimum battery. I put it in, I think, last year. Let me go around the other side and I'll show you. It does have uh, dual rads. You can see on the far side the rad and the overflow there. Uh, never have any overheating issues. It's been great. Two high-speed fans work on it. Kicks on at 180. Hey. Always hovers around 190. Maybe creeps up to 200 on the wicked hot days. And that's about it. That's one of the telltale signs that you know this is a replica. Because it has a... Uh, uh, coming out from behind there is a transaxle. And uh, the Griffin's basically using Richmond parts. Uh, so it's stout and pretty. I think it's rated for 500 horsepower and uh, it's uh, geared for uh, the LT1, which is great. So in the back here we have its, uh, you see it's carpeted up some wiring there for the lights. And it's dirty because I haven't cleaned it back here all summer. But uh, there's the computer. Uh, for the LT1, so it's all stock. Nothing's modified in the engine, it's stock. So it'd be about 300 horsepower, about 325, I think, torque, something like that. And there's a few engine fuses there, uh, but most of them are up in the cabin. Everything's labeled too. We almost forgot. I have a light switch in here, could have used that one. There you go. So up here front, you uh, notice there's the AC uh, condenser and everything there. So it's basically been re uh, relocated up here to the front. It was originally in the back where the engine was. I guess they weren't getting enough cooling. It moved it up here to the front. Man, the AC in this works great. So I ain't touched anything on it. Worked from day one. I think I topped it off a little bit when I first got it to get it working. And then uh, that's in the archives of the blog, I think. And after that, it's been fantastic. It's so cold, it's fantastic. And you have to have this in this car. So there's uh, just some crossovers for the speaker there and the sidewall over there. There's a water jug for the windshield washer and the motor for the uh, wiper, which have never been used. Wiper came on once when I got a little drizzle on it one time coming home, but that was it. And the pop-up headlights, all that, lights all work. Let's go inside. So this is the interior. You can see it doesn't have the gated shifter, and there's a reason for that. I'll show you in a second, but it does have the banana seats. These are a must for this type of car. And I'll show you why in a second when I hop in. But everything in here is all done. It's even got the, uh, you know, uh, sun visors. The dash is a little more custom. And that's so it's to fit somebody that's six feet tall. Anybody that's uh, been in some of these cars knows that it's a tight fit for a lot of them. And if you're uh, over six feet tall, you just don't want to fit. 
I am six foot. I'll jump in here. I have the seat about two clicks forward. All right. Well, anybody's watched the channel seen me do this a hundred times. So I'm six foot, 260 probably, as you can probably tell. So the banana seats are great. You kind of rotate yourself to where you fit best and you got options. My head is probably a half inch clear of the roof and I'm six foot tall. So if you're six foot, you'll fit. I'll bring you in now so you can see. All right, I'm bringing you in. Anybody seen my videos knows that uh, so there's a uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it under here there's a little latch I'm gonna open the door all right it's also down here there's also that to open it So, there we go, it's got a bin, and the dash, as you can see, it's got tilt steering here, so you can, you need two hands to do it, and I haven't got anywhere to put the camera. Let's put it down so you can at least see the gauges. So there you go, the uh, gauges are not uh, all the Lamborghini authentic ones, but they are the uh, Swiss Warner, I think it is. Like Lambo uses. There's the gauges. And you can see my knees in here, and it, with the steering wheel down, it fits in there pretty comfortable. And once you're driving, it's pretty good. AC works, like I said, fantastic. Mirrors are elec uh, electronic, electric. Those two dials to the left there are, that's what that's for. Horns in the middle and uh, the vents. Orange left, top left there is the uh, fog lights. You got the lights in the center there and the pods that open and close. I'll just grab those in a second and show you. Dimmer to the right of that. That switch up at the very top there, I believe is for the uh, boomerang security system, arming and dearming it. Middle there has got your uh, regular HVAC controls for the uh, um, vintage air. Toggle on the bottom, toggle the left is for the left door and to the right is the passenger right door. One in the middle is to activate the uh, uh, fans if you want to turn them on prematurely. Uh, you can override it and turn the cooling fans for the engine on right there. And the one on the right is the dimmer or uh, dome lights. You can see down there. And that works too. So, and we got the Lamborghini mats. They're getting pretty tired. I need to clean it, as you can tell. So, yeah, view out the back, pretty non-existent. I have all the wings and the door still up, so it's kind of hard to see. There is the radio. I don't think I've actually had it on. The only time I think I've had it on when I'm driving is uh, when I hit it with my knee by accident. <laughs> Let's show you underneath, shall we? We've got the uh, front of the car up. There are actually a few uh, chips here on the edge. The leading edge. There's another dinger there. So the car is it. There's a crack right there. But uh, look at that. They've been there since day one. Haven't changed. It's a custom tube chassis. So there you can see square tube chassis for the most part. It's manual steering. There's the manual steering rack, I believe. That is a Fiero. Not 100% sure. I believe the front suspension is Fiero. It's been modified, however, uh, for proper geometry. And the brakes are manual too. So uh, that's one big difference you'll notice of 
compared to today's convenience in cars, there's a sway bar there. Uh, but the manual brakes are, uh, they work. You just gotta stand on them more than you're used to with our traditional cars. That's the drain for the AC there. And it's got a flat bottom on the pan over the uh, cabin area. We'll go to the back. So here's the back end. I'm at the back of the car now. So there's the uh, transaxle. That's the uh, Richmond unit. They're going right at the back of the car. So you, uh, there's a few drips coming from. You can see one right there uh, from the transaxle, but it's only maybe an ounce a year that it drips. That's about it. The little bit of engine oil coming out of the uh, top. The main seal's been done and everything, so it's not that. Uh, it's coming, I think, from uh, the valve covers at the top, but it's not very much. Like I say, I, not enough to worry, even worry about it. it doesn't, the car doesn't lose any oil. And like I say, I just maybe top off and put maybe an ounce every year in the transaxle. That's about it. There's the back end of the transaxle. So nice thing it's geared for the highway. So doing about 100 km an hour or 55 miles an hour. You're only doing, uh, I think, 1,600 or 1,200. Was it 1,200 or 1,600? I'm getting the cars mixed up now. There's about, four, well, let's say 1,400 RPM, which is great in fifth gear. So, all right. Tires on the rear, I bought them eight years ago. Plenty of tread left on them, They're practically new. The fronts probably will need redoing. They're starting to get old, and I think they just need replacing. So there you go. It's a Lamborghini Countach replica for sale. If you're interested, you can email me at Lamborghini Countach replica at gmail.com. Put across the street. Lots of links in the description to all the videos that are relative to selling the car, driving it, everything uh, I've done recently with it. So any updates, I'll let you know. If it's sold, I'll let you know.